I'm so proud of our staff and all the incredible work that they do. And it is our tradition to offer a do unto others offering. And that offering during this season is usually to help create a wonderful Christmas bonus for our staff. And I just want to take a moment to personally brag upon each and every one of the staff members here at City of Light. The incredible dedication that they offer to this ministry and their selfless and uh, just generous giving of time, talent, and treasures. I'm so proud of our facility manager, Sarah Eliado, and the work that she's done in caring for the building during this pandemic. She has used her skills as an electrician. She's used her skills in building management and her ability to uh, just help uh, facilitate and oversee the growth and the expansion of so many projects that are going here from the development of our kitchen to the Wisdom Center and so much more. I'm so grateful for Scott Dunn and the beautiful music that he shares with us each week and the willingness to share his talents. Greatly appreciated as well and so proud of Steve Ginn and his dedication towards the cleanliness and being the church sexton, seeing that things are tidy and everything around the facility looking fantastic. I appreciate these fine people and others who contribute to make sure that this is truly a dynamic ministry that's going forward even in the midst of challenges. And I so appreciate each and every one of you who are willing to make a donation and are due unto others fund during this time that goes towards the Christmas bonus for these fine people. For those of you gathered here, if you'd like to make your donation, you can place it in the basket that's seated up there. And for those of you who are joining us through live streaming, if you'd like to donate towards this wonderful cause, please uh, go to our website at www.cityofalightatlanta.com. Greatly appreciate your generous, generous giving during this time. Thank you. These people, we love them so much as we love so many and we appreciate us so much that they've done for us. Well, tis the season, tis the season. And what is this season? It's the season of expectancy, all summed up in that word Advent. Advent meaning to the coming, the rise, the emergence of something great. Well, that's truly what expectancy is all about. It is the rise, it is the coming, it is the uh, really uh, the emergence of something great unfolding within our lives as we initiate the energy of being expectant. Here at City of Life, I tell you what, we're really big on helping people understand the power of faith, the power of believing, the power of being expectant in all things. Because you can have faith you can say, this is what I have learned, but I, there must be a power of believing behind it. And you can have belief, but you must have the energy of expectancy to couple with it. How important it is that we experience all of this, and that's why I'm so appreciative of the season of Advent that calls us and refreshes us and renews us to a season of being expectant in our day-to-day -day journey expecting of all kinds of good things, the unfolding of all kinds of blessings, expecting of every day being the good that God has provided for us and allowing us to be in that great spirit of appreciation because as we're expectant and as we're appreciative of all that has been given to us, we just create a dynamic power for faith to be launched in a great way. We've just completed the season of gratitude with Thanksgiving celebration and all the appreciation for the goodness that God has. Now let's take it to another level as we begin a fresh new season. Did you know that Advent is the beginning of the church season in the traditional Christian realm? It's the beginning. The church calendar starts today with Advent. Why? Because this spirit of expectancy is so crucial for our lives that we begin everything, take every step of each day's day-to-day -day journey with this spirit of Advent, expectancy, the rise, the welcoming, the coming of something great unfolding within our lives. And so it is important that we embrace an Advent spirit every single day of our journey but we celebrate it with great intensity and awareness. As we light the candles on our Advent display, each candle helping us draw closer and closer to the awareness that the Christ consciousness is ever unfolding within our life on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, have you noticed? Have you noticed the days are getting shorter 
and the nights are getting so much longer. You know, it used to be that, uh, you know, you could go out at nine o'clock and there was all kinds of sunlight. Now it's very dark. The days are much shorter. The nights are much longer because we're in a season of change. This change is drawing near as we enter into the season of a winter solstice a solstice that brings about a change from fall to winter, but so much more metaphysically for us to understand what a winter solstice is all about. You see, winter solstice happens in the Northern Hemisphere when the planet is tilted away from the sun. The amount of sunlight changes and bringing us the longest nights and the shortest days. But on Monday, December 21st, the winter solstice we experience a change, an end. It is the shortest day and the longest night of the year, but it's also the beginning of a new era, a new time, a new season. It's the beginning of light unfolding in greater ways than ever before. For this is what sums up the metaphor for Advent, a season of coming to a moment of great expectancy of change and unfolding of the highest and best within our lives. Every day of Advent, one of the great things we can do to help celebrate it is to start your day by saying, I'm expecting something. I'm expecting something. And we can change that word something with something specific. Or we can just simply add, I'm expecting something good, great, dynamic. I'm expecting is what's so important for us to embrace this very thought of the power of expectation in our lives. Because let me tell you this, during this season of Advent, during this season of change, we're not alone in this. Did you know that there are 14 different religious holidays happening in the month of December? Wow, there's a lot of holidays taking place between Thanksgiving and the new year. That's why we, as people of inclusion say, happy holidays because we're including, we're gracious, we're expanding our consciousness and awareness of kindness to say, I celebrate your holiday and your holiday and your holiday and your holiday just as much as I'm aware of my holiday and you celebrate mine. So in kindness, we offer this kind of greeting of happy holidays because we understand that we're not the only ones who are living in the spirit of expectation because there are others who are also celebrating during the season holidays, occasions of great expectations unfolding within their life. Each one that is celebrating is celebrating the power of something wonderful happening, something beautiful, expectation. Now, why would this be a season of expectancy? I'm glad you asked. I'm really glad you asked because let's just talk about that for a moment. Because in the darkest of times, hope rises so beautifully. And here we are in this season where the planet is tilted away and away, the days are longer, the nights, uh, the days are shorter, the nights are longer. And so what we're finding is a great metaphor for our day-to-day -day journey, for understanding what it's all about, that hope is rising in the darkest times. And when you're facing all kinds of challenges in your day-to-day -day journey, this is your time to ignite the power of expectancy in your life because hope will rise the fastest in the midst of these dark times. When you're thinking that there is no possibility, that's when possibilities can rise the quickest when you shift into the spirit of expectancy. There's no possibility, but I'm going to kick in this energy that I know that in the midst of this darkest time, hope is rising. And anticipation helps us then rise and elevate all the possibilities that are there within our world. The Christian tradition of celebrating light and love and the message of Jesus was actually moved to this season. That's right, Jesus, I'm sorry to tell you, was not born on December 25th. Theologians down through the ages have said, most likely Jesus was born in the springtime. That would make more sense and align with everything that's alluded in the scriptures. And December 25th was chosen later on to be the occasion to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Why? Because it's so fit with what was going on in the world that light coming in a winter solstice 
breaking forth a new dawn and new possibilities and change began to embody the spirit of expectancy that Jesus brought as he came into this world as a teacher and master way shower, teaching us the power of believing and faith and knowing in the power of expectancy, great things unfold, teaching us the understanding of an eternal life that is abundant, full and rich, understanding all of these things. It seems so metaphorically apropos to celebrate Christmas at this time of the year. This season then really depicts our everyday experience. The ancients saw the days growing shorter and the nights growing longer and an end to the growing season, but knew in expectation that change was coming. A transformation was about to happen, that the sun, although it seemed to be drifting away, was then going to shift and start drawing closer. And so they realized, wow, this is a time of great change and awareness in our life. So the season of Advent is filled with expectancy for what? For change, for transformation to happen within your life, for a fresh new awakening and an awareness of the light and love of the divine, the light and love of God that is there for us that transforms and changes our life. This change is really so amazing because as we find out it's the beginning of the church traditions, the church calendar, what we understand is that every great beginning starts with the spirit of expectancy. So if we're starting our new year, and we will be in just a matter of weeks, starting 2021, now's the time to ignite this power of expectancy for what that year holds. This is the beginning of the church calendar. Let's ignite our church journey, our spiritual journey, our uh, life in uh, community with one another in, in fellowship. Let's ignite it with expectancy. I am expecting great things to unfold on a day-to-day -day basis in my interaction with others, in my fellowship with one another, in everything that I encounter within the life and ministry of this church, within life and ministry of this, in this world. Everything is moving in that spirit of expectancy because this season is a time that telling us that this is the moment to kick in to really rev up the spirit of expectancy within our life. As waves of darkness have come in our life, waves of doubt and fear, waves of questioning have come. And certainly during this pandemic, so many of us have been feeling the waves coming against us of, so of this pandemic and how it's affecting our lives. People are getting tired and depressed and worn out and saying, oh, I just want this to change and I want you to hold on with the power of expectancy right now and allow that power to be ignited. Change is coming. It's a new day that's unfolding for us and welcome the change that we're going to usher in through the power of our believing, our faith, our expectancy that's going to unfold within our lives. Where you see expectancy, it's an energy an energy of optimism and anticipation that something good is about to happen. And we want to be energy creators, manifestors, shall we say, those who stir up the energy. We want to be those who are building up the energy for the world around us. We want to be like uh, the windmill that takes the wind blowing through it and manifests it and creates energy from it, taking everything we can and allowing ourselves to be that which ignites an energy of hope and promise of belief that all things are working together for good. Because this expectancy is telling us some very key things. One is that in the power of expectancy, it's crucial we understand we must wait. Wait, be patient, be gracious. And the secret to waiting is found in expectancy. Expectancy asks us to wait, and the secret to waiting is found in expectancy. Do you see how they go hand in hand with one another? Because as we begin to just be patient in expectancy, we find that expectancy helps us be patient. We find I'm expecting good things, and I can be patient and knowing that they're coming, but I know that they're coming, so I can be even more gracious, and I can be more in the spirit of waiting because I know, I know, I know they're coming. And that's the power of expectant energy at work within our lives. It's when you believe 
that God will do what God says, you will not give up on waiting at any time, but you'll wait for God's time. When you really believe that God will make a way when there seems to be no way, when you really believe that God says, I have promised prosperity for you and blessing. I promise health and wholeness. I promise all these wonderful things. And that the spiritual laws of this world are at work when you really invest in them and hold dear to them, they enable you to be patient, able to wait and rest, and to rest in the fullness of knowing expectant great things are happening within our lives. Let me tell you this. It's okay to expect something amazing. It's okay. It's okay to expect something bigger than what you've been thinking. The scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 through 29 shares, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. And yes, and things which are not to, uh, to bring to naught things that are. This is the beautiful thing that you can begin to believe for something amazing, bigger, and expect it. Because this is the power of God at work within our lives, working through the energy of faith that is filled with expectancy. I am believing, I am knowing, and even more than that, I am expecting this to happen within our life. For what is expectancy? It's the gateway to living as if. A lot of people talk about living as if. How do we get there? In other words, living as if that which we claimed and that which we prayed for, that which we believed for, is actually here and unfolding in our life right here and now. That's living as if. I'm living as if I'm prosperous. I'm living as if I'm successful. I'm living as if I'm in loving relationships. I'm living as if I'm health and wholeness. I'm living as if all things are working together for good. I'm living as if. And the gateway to entering into that way of living, a lifestyle, is the spirit of expectancy, is the advent spirit, the spirit that gives rise, that welcomes, that calls forth uh, within our very being. When we live in expectancy that the answer is there, well, we are then unfolding all that we believe to be true, that we have expected for. Now, let me tell you this. Jesus, our great example, showed the power of expectancy for something amazing that the rest of the world might have said, oh, or you and I might have said, oh, I don't know if this really can unfold. Can you imagine Jesus standing before the crowd of 5,000 men, not counting women and children, hungry, people who wanted to be fed, and here he is holding up a little basket of fishes and loaves. Now you can imagine if Jesus didn't have the power of expectancy to believe that something was going to work through that, be manifested through that blessing of these things. You can imagine how embarrassing it might have been to say, I have some food and I'm blessing it. I'm holding in front of you all hungry people and uh, there's not enough to go around and there's not enough to bless and there's not enough to touch you. Well, you can imagine how embarrassing that would be. But he held it up with confidence and expectation that as I break this bread, there is enough for everyone. Wow. Jesus, at the wedding of Cana, invited the uh, servants to bring forth all the pitchers of water. Water. And in our physical mind, we might say, what are you going to do with water, Jesus? We're looking for wine. Wine is what was needed for the celebration. And what what's but with great expectation, he asked them to come and bring this to him because he believed, he expected, he lived as if. And the power and energy of that expectation ignited the work of great faith in our lives. When Jesus stood before Mary and Martha and those who had gathered at the death of Lazarus, standing outside the tomb, can you imagine if Jesus said, I'm gonna try this, I'm not sure it's gonna work, but I'm gonna call, Lazarus come forth, you know, but he did so with great expectation and confidence in believing. Lazarus, come forth. And what happens? The Lazarus comes out of the tomb, rising up in health and wholeness. These stories are illustrating to us the power of expectation in our lives. Jesus, our great way shower, teaches us how to live then this season of Advent 
to its fullness. We use the power of expectation to do something very special. It energizes our life. So often in our spiritual journey, we can easily become stagnant, stuck. You know, things have been going really great and then somehow the world distracts us from our spiritual growth and the evolution that we're going through and we just kind of get stuck and we get stagnant. We're stuck there a little bit. And what happens then for change and transformation is we ignite the spirit of expectancy. I'm expecting something wonderful. And we start by saying something good is going to happen in my life today. Something good is going to happen in my life today. And that begins to ignite the flames. It begins to raise up and move us from this stagnant position because we begin to live and operate in simple faith. You expect it. Do you know that expectation uh, will do something good? It actually energizes the nervous system. This is a beautiful little thought for us to grasp how spirituality and science come together. And I'm a firm believer in spirituality and science being not in competition with one another, but unfolding awareness and helping each other, complementing each other, and explaining how the world operates, both through the logic of science and the beauty of faith and expectancy of our spiritual journey. And what happens is, while a particular expectation sort of narrows our choices, the expectations of blessings causes the mind to actually release dopamine. Dopamine, the in it does something powerful. It energizes the system. This chemical in the brain actually energizes the system. Professor Wolfram Schultz discovered the neuromodulator dopamine. It is released when you begin to believe it is so. When you begin to believe, when there's a spirit of expectancy ignited within your life, something beautiful happens. And what happens is that you begin to believe, indicating that your actions are going to lead you into your blessing, into your reward, into that which you desire unfolding in your life. So this dopamine provides clarity to our immediate objectives, and it makes a person actually feel more energetic and elated. And this process inducts us into something called living in the now the happy spirit. Now, Scott played, come on, get happy. That's exactly what it's all about. The very expectation saying, releasing within the body, this energy that says, wow, joy floods me now because I know all things are working together for good because I expect all things to work together for good. I'm believing all things are working together. And what's happening is this dopamine release in the body is a scientific way that explains the spiritual reaction we're having, why we feel so much more energized and our spiritual life more alive and our faith ignited and moving to new levels. Because this dopamine levels, they begin to rise when you begin to desire something, even as simple as maybe something like, I wanna make a change, I wanna go across the road, I wanna go here, I'm gonna go, whatever, that dopamine begins to rise within us and a person begins to feel more aware and more interested in the tasks at hand. Now this is science, but this is our spiritual life as well. When we are in the spirit of expectation, this energy floods the soul and it begins to move in new levels as never before. It's the expectation of a reward. It's the expectation of the desire. It's the expectation that says, I know and I believe that releases something beautiful within our life. You know, it, I hate to tell you this, when it comes to a, a vacation, 90% of the joy of your vacation is found in the anticipation, anticipation, the expectation of what this vacation is going to be like. And only 10% of the joy comes from the actual experience. So it is the expectation that makes your vacation great, not the actual experience, although it, that can contribute to it as well. But it's heightened by, I'm going on vacation, I'm going on a cruise, or I'm going to Costa Rica, or I'm traveling to Europe, I'm excited, I'm gonna have adventures, I'm in all kinds of possibilities, or I'm going to see my grandkids, and how wonderful that's gonna be, and I can't wait to, for this and that, and we think about all these wonderful things in expectation. 
You see, here's what's really important, is that this power is igniting something within us. And when we understand that, we want to capture that this season and every day of our life. Now, you may say to me, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. I'm afraid sometimes to really be a person of expectations because I'm afraid that what happens? What if my expectations don't unfold? What, what if life doesn't meet my expectations? Here's what's the problem with that alone. When we begin to say, what if life doesn't meet my expectations? We're actually setting ourselves up for life not meeting our expectations because we're already casting doubt. We're already casting questions. We're throwing out fear and worry and stress and anxiety and all this kind of stuff that's going to hinder life meeting our full expectation. So we want to eradicate that kind of thinking from our life and enable us to just really open ourselves up to possibilities. As the scripture says, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Above what you can ask. Above what you can think. So our problem is quite often when we're saying, I don't know if life's gonna meet my expectations. We keep thinking from our human, physical thinking and all its limitations. And yet God works in the realm of the spiritual. That is beyond a realm of limitations, but in a realm of infinite possibilities within our life. You may say, I don't expect something because I continually I think from my limitations, and that's so true. You keep thinking from your human perspective versus thinking from the divine perspective. All things are possible with God. Wow. And when we think from then, we know that the power of expectation takes us to a new level, to a new place. I have a roommate named Ray. And Ray has decided that he's going to move out and he's going to uh, find his own place. And so he began to look around to find out in this time of COVID-19 when a lot of people aren't open to welcoming new people in a senior environment. And he's looking for independent living in a senior setting. So he called around and the doors were all closed. And he was saying, you know what? I don't know that I'm gonna be able to leave or move because it seems like the doors are closed, but I'm expecting, and I love that he said that, I'm expecting something to open soon. And their phone rang and lo and behold, it was an independent living center saying, we have an opening. We just had an opening uh, uh, transpire in the last few days. It's a studio, would you like it? Oh, he was elated. Yes, I've been expecting, and this is going to open up for me, and I can uh, move out into a, my own little place and uh, express all of his independence and uh, have full control <laughs> of his environment. And he then said, whoa, wait, 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 wait. I don't have a bed, and I don't have dishes, because he's been a roommate in our house. He used our bed and our dishes, and the phone rang again. And what happened was, here was the independent living center said, by the way, the place is vacant because a woman had just passed away. She transitioned from this life. And so the opportunity for a new person to move in was made available, but she left a bed and some dishes. Would you like them? <laughs> Woo! All right, what I'm telling you is this, in a power and presence of expectancy, something ignites and things begin to move. That's right, wheels begin to turn. That's the power of faith and believing when you say, I'm expecting something to happen. You know what? It does, because all things are possible with those who are loving and holding dear to the very promises of spiritual law within our life. So today I'm inviting you to engage in a moment of turning up the power of expectancy, to turn up, dial it up. Let's dial up the volume during this season of Advent and let's be people of great expectancy of the good that is God unfolding each and every day within our life. And the key is, I ain't giving up. That's right. Because when we're in expectancy, 
It is that, it's just, I know it. It's coming, it's happening. And though the world around us is, oh, it's not. It may not be available. That won't happen for you. The doors are closed. The power of expectancy works through, breaks through those barriers as we dial it up in our life and we engage in the energy. What happens is it just begins to break through old barriers. Faith, belief, and expectancy are taking us to new levels. So this season is all about teaching us that in the darkest of times, we have the power to expect something wonderful. Expect the light is come. A new day is there for each and every one. God bless you. Amen.